guys, welcome to Art with Anna. We are going to take a look at another artist. Surprise, surprise. Um, the artist's name today is Marlene Dumas, and she is an artist from South Africa, um, but she currently resides in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Um, she's in her 60s and um, has been painting a lot of her life. She did go to art school, so she is classically trained. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about her and her inspiration. Um, and one of the series that she has created. So we're actually just gonna work on one art piece today. Typically we do two. However, this one art piece will need two paintings to make it. So it's kind of a two-in-one art piece. So let's grab out the supplies that we'll need and then we'll get into our artist and get into our artwork. All right. You will need two sheets of white paper, a slightly creepy face, a palette for your paint, black, red, blue, and white paint, a cup of water, and a paintbrush. All right, uh, Marlene Dumas is probably most famous for a series of hers called Rejects. And you'll see here that these are just a bunch of kind of anonymous portraits of people. And while you might be thinking, this is kind of rude to call people rejects. Um, she actually talks about the title being more about her work of art and less about the people in the work of art. So she says, if I already call my art a reject, then I can't really fail, right? Rejects are supposed to be people who have failed. And if I say that my artwork is already a reject and I put it out there, then people can't tell me anything worse. So I think that's kind of a funny concept, thinking about her artwork as the, as the reject and not the people in the paintings. Now, one of her biggest inspirations is another artist named Edvard Munch. Um, you'll recognize him from the Scream painting that we've talked about in the past. And while he's kind of known for that painting and that painting's kind of became, um, it's become some sort of a icon in society, but kind of a joke, um, I think what's missed is how great his other artworks are and how talented he is in invoking emotion. And that's also what Merlin is talented at and inspired by. Um, both artists kind of paint these figures and although there isn't a ton of detail in their faces, you can see that the there's a distinct emotion um, in the painting, even though there's not every single line in detail in their face. So we'll just be thinking about emotions while we're painting, just like the both of them. Um, and we are going to make our own rejects. So the first thing you'll maybe notice is that a lot of these um, paintings are just in black and white. They're just simple uh, monochrome paintings. So we do have black and white paint here. But a few of them do have a little bit of, um, well, there's a lot of gray. We're going to mix the two. Um, and some of them have gray hues tinted with a little bit of red or tinted with a little bit of blue. Um, we're thinking about Pablo Picasso. His blue period, right, when was, was when he was sad. He was painting a lot of things that were blue. Um, and then he afterwards had a rose period when he had fallen in love with a woman. And that was kind of a happier time and it was tinted red. So maybe those colors have to do with that. I'm not sure. Um, but I was thinking about that when I was looking at her artwork. So another thing she mentions is that artists, um, art is a dialogue between other artists. So um, her artwork is kind of a response to Munch's artwork. Um, so we are creating artwork kind of in a response to her. So let's get out our first sheet of paper. I have made this somewhat creepy template for you guys um, of a face, but it is the proportions of how your face naturally is. Um, faces come in kind of a standard proportion. So your eyes are actually about halfway down your head. You were to go like this, see the top of my head? It's about the same as this, right? So your eyes are actually halfway down your head about. So I'll try to show you that here with your hairline about a fourth of the way up, your nose about a fourth of the way down, and then your chin the final fourth, but in between your chin and your nose is your mouth. So this looks like from a horror movie, but this is trying to help us with our proportions so we know where to kind of put our eyes, our nose, and our mouth. First of all, um, we are going to take our piece of paper and we're gonna take our palette 
And we're going to put out our colors. So we're going to want a section of white, black, um, and then you can either choose if you want red or blue, or you can choose both. So um, I'll go with just red today. And we'll want to mix a few colors of gray. All right, so I have just a plate here as my palette, putting in some black. I'm gonna do a little bit, another section of just a little bit of black because I wanna make a section of gray there. Um, I'll mix some white in with that black. Do a section of white here, and then a small section of red. So this is gonna be my palette for today. Um, I'm gonna mix, get our gray nicely mixed. I keep always forgetting about how pigmented this black paint is and how not pigmented this white paint is. We're gonna have to add, add some in here, make that a lighter gray. Here's an even lighter gray and I'm just gonna have to make another white over here. Okay, so we've got some colors going on. This will be our palette. So the first thing is we are going to take some gray, um, can be either of the gray tones. And we are just gonna kind of make an oval shape like this, the shape of a head. Taking up most of the paper, you'll want it generally the size of our stencil. We're just gonna make a circle. From there, we're gonna grab, load up our paintbrush from white and we're gonna fill it in. And it's okay that you're mixing a light gray tone on here. In fact, it's preferred. Now, something that our artist said she was inspired by was just making marks, the act of making. Um, not so much the details or anything being too um, technically correct. So give yourself some freedom here to kind of just make some marks. But all of these paintings were portraits, which are people's faces. I'm just going to add a little bit of a neck down here, too. Like that. Ground us a little bit. So I am going to take my template and place it on top. This is just going to help me um, with some proportions of my face. I'm going to take some black. Just put some marks in there, um, but we can edit them when we remove this, okay? So I got some marks made, and now you get to make your person more your own. And we're just going to make marks like that. We're making just general shapes that make it look somewhat like a human face. Some eyebrows, some hair. But we wanna make this, some ears over here, kind of quick. Um, we don't want this to be too perfect. We want it just to be kind of a quick, general face. So I'm left with kind of this person. Now I was thinking about emotion, just like kind of a content emotion while making this. So my guy's got a little bit of a smile going on. And this could be my first reject. Now we're gonna repeat this exact same thing with another sheet. And you can even do a third or a fourth if you want. The reason being this, a lot of her reject paintings were actually layers of two paintings. And she would tear out the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And then you'd be able to see the eyes, nose and the mouth or even just sections of them because they wouldn't line up perfectly with another face underneath. So we're gonna do the same. All right, so I'm gonna do this a similar thing. I'm gonna take some gray, I'm gonna make a different head shape here. Add a neck down there. 
add some weight and start to fill it in. Well, you can think about any emotion you'd like. I will say that an emotion she talks about a lot is the emotion of emotions of anxiety and depression. Um, something she thought Munk did well was paint everyday people with some anxieties or, you know, maybe they're in different stages of life. Thinking about how anxiety and depression, they're a part of the human condition. We have those emotions and we feel them, right? It's only a problem if you're feeling only them or you're feeling them for too long of a time. But they are normal feelings for us to feel. And a lot of paintings of people would make would have to do with war. So anxiety really was um, thought about being with war. But Munch and uh, Marlene both draw the emotion in just everyday life. I, I feel like you can kind of maybe sense that in her artwork. So I have now my two, um, two faces and they're really just gestural. There aren't many details. Like we really don't know the shape of their nose really or the shape of their eyes. Um, we don't know who these people are. We can tell they're kind of human forms, but they're not anything specific. If you did want, I forgot about this, to add some color to yours, you'll take a gray tone and add just a pinch of the color that you wanted. And then you can add that. You can see I have just a little bit of red in here, but not much. Um, really add that to your portrait as well. Add in some of that color. All right, so we have our two paintings here. Something that Marlene said was as long as she had possession of some of her artworks, they were hers. But as long as she sold them, she wasn't able to alter them anymore. So a lot of her works, even after she had painted them, it had been years since she had painted them, she would take and she would rip them or add to them or change them over time. When she gave them away, obviously they were permanent from then on. So one of the things she would have done um, with this is ripped out maybe the eyes and the mouth of one of her art pieces of art. So you'll decide which one you want to go on top and which one to be on bottom. Then once you've decided that, we're simply going to, you can do this with a um, scissors if you want to, but I've just stuck my finger through. It's a little bit messy. Um, and I'm going to tear out the eyes of this top one so that the face of the bottom one will show through a little bit more. And sometimes she did even more than two. Um, there'd be three or four, right? Paintings on top of one another. This was just a way of her um, exploring and changing up her art, thinking about it differently over time. Take out this. We've got something that looks like this. You can see the eyes and the mouth have kind of shown through from the previous one. All right, and this is a reject. Remember, this is about the artwork. This person is not a reject that we've painted, but if this painting did not come out how you wanted, no problem. No one could say anything bad about it because you yourself have already named it a reject. <laughs> I love that about this. Um, if you want, you can add a third one on top if you feel like you have a little bit of extra time. But this is a result of some of her artwork. I think it's really unique. It's unique that you can go like this and see another face underneath. And possibly she's talking about how some of us put um, emotions on like a mask, like a happy emotion to hide something else. I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about while making this artwork. All right. 
Do we think it looks the same? I don't think it's so far off. Well, guys, this is kind of a short one today, but um, hopefully you paused and worked on two pieces of art uh, before moving on. And um, thanks for making art with me this week. I'll see you guys later. All right, bye.